I used to be a teacher trainer and back then I would often read out this poem to my students uh, about risk uh, in order to encourage them to push the envelope and uh, create sort of um, standout moments in their teaching. It's written by that most prolific of authors, Anonymous, and I'd just like to read some of it to you. To laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. To reach out is to risk involvement. To expose feelings is to risk exposing your true self. To place your ideas and dreams before the crowd is to risk their love. To love is to risk being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But the greatest hazard is to risk nothing. The one who risks nothing may avoid sufferings and sorrows, but he simply cannot learn, feel, change, grow or love. Chained by his certitude, he's a slave. He has forfeited freedom. Only one who risks is free. That's about the size of it. And um, what I mean by risks is, of course, calculated risks, not risks where you put yourself in danger or anybody else. But sometimes we perceive things as dangerous, even though they're not. Um, and it's it's perhaps our ego speaking. Um, it depends on what kind of danger it is. If it's something like, uh, don't jump off that cliff, of course, that sort of risk is not something you should undertake, nor would you perhaps see that there's any sort of big reward involved in that. And when there isn't, probably shouldn't go there. But if it's a sort of risk where a part of you tells you, don't apply for that job, you're not gonna get it anyway, then it might be a risk worth taking because it's your ego that's afraid of failing or not getting the job. But if you don't risk it, you definitely won't get the job. So some opportunities are disguised as dangerous, but they're not really dangerous, just to our egos. What I think is most important about taking risks is about your self-image. I've read lots of articles that talk about how um, you will be viewed as courageous or cool or somebody who pushes your boundaries by other people. But I don't really care about that. I mean, uh, you know, if you're dependent on how others view you, you're, you're not going to last long anyway. That's a slippery slope. What I mean is that if you decide to be the kind of person who does difficult things or you rise to the challenges that you meet, you will gradually be able to do, take on more risks. The more you do difficult things, the more courageous or brave you'll be next time you have to do something that's challenging. And you will know back in your mind that you can do it because you didn't die last time and you probably won't this time. One of my favorite childhood heroines, Pippi Longstocking, said, I haven't tried that before, so I can probably do it. Now that's not something most adults will say to themselves because a lot of us are really driven by our egos. Uh, we're afraid of failing. But if we constantly don't try stuff, um, new things that we don't know how to do, we will for one thing, not learn very much. For another, uh, our lives won't be very exciting. As a really smart teacher I had once said, there's no learning without goofing. So of course you will fail sometimes. The more you risk stuff, the more you will fail. But ultimately, you will also learn new things. And the things you learn down the road will sort of be an upgrade of what you used to have to learn because you've now tried more stuff. And of course, um, ultimately, your life will probably be a little more exciting certainty, constant certainty at any rate, doesn't uh, amount to an exciting life. The part of you that might take a blow if you fail is your ego. Your ego wants you to play it safe and not try out new stuff. It's automatically uh, afraid of change. The Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard famously said, whether you get married or you don't get married, you'll regret it either way. If we're to draw any conclusions from that, assuming that he's right, uh, maybe we should just go ahead and get married, or whatever risky endeavor it is that we are thinking about. Because if we'll end up uh, regretting it either way, why not have the most exciting and interesting life that we could possibly get? Assuming again, of course, you're not endangering yourself or behaving with reckless abandon. It'll enrich our lives and um, add more spice Okay, so one of the risks of recording a video outside is that your cat will suddenly hear you. I'm up on the balcony of our house and the cat is down there now complaining, meowing really loudly. Well, he's not going to be in this video.
The thing about taking risks is that you have to move out of your comfort zone. That's practically the definition of risk taking. Um, but there is the potential of expansion, expanding your sense of self. That involves facing certain fears. If there's absolutely no fear involved, it's by definition not really risky. And you have to accept that you have to probably push yourself and not necessarily know where it's going to take you. You can't ultimately know the result. That's why it's risky. Whether it's asking somebody out or speaking in front of crowds or daring to move town or applying for a new job, whatever it is, it depends on what your story is and what you find difficult. You might not find it difficult to set up a new business, so your sense of expansion might lie elsewhere. Maybe you're past 50 and you want to run a marathon. That's perhaps pretty risky. Some of the best things that have happened to me have happened when I took some risks, whether that was uh, talking to somebody for the first time that I wanted to be friends with, um, getting married, having children, moving town, moving country. Um, even even small risks like years ago when I when I couldn't go traveling, I cut off all my hair. It was way longer than this and it was pretty blonde. And I cut it really short and I dyed it red because I had to do something. What did I gain from that apart from a, a realization that I really didn't look good with short hair? An expanded sense of self, a self-perception that encompassed making uncertain choices, a certain sense of adventure about myself. This was only heightened when, a couple of months later, I traveled to India for two months. Something I really hadn't thought I was going to be able to, um, to do. And after that, my sense of self had really expanded dramatically and I was capable of doing more things. In short, if you don't take any risks, you might never know your true potential. And wouldn't that be a shame? Okay, I was getting some major pins and needles in my feet from sitting on them for so long, but we were done anyway, weren't we? Because you're gonna go out now and take some fun, interesting, adventurous risks. At least I hope you will. And I wish you joy. Thanks for watching.